Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to have your MindFlayer microbots run and jump at you to demonstrate basic movement. Now this tutorial is going to be building off our previous beginner tutorial being the LookerBot. In particular, we're going to be changing up the look at me command. Now a quick refresher on what this command does. We find all players, we find the specific player that said the command look at me, and then we just look at that player's position. However, with this new modified version on our jumper bot, we're gonna to wanna to do the exact same thing with the addition of actually running and jumping at the player once we have looked at them. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use this run and jump function, which is the custom function. So if we look up here, you'll see how it works. Now this is fairly simple, but it is the first time that we're taking a look at async tasks. And for this, the most important thing you need to know is syntax. So if you ever wanna take a look at actually using async tasks in your MindFlayer bots, just know that if your code looks something roughly like this, you're probably doing something right. Now, as for how this run and jump function works in game, the part that we really care about is this middle part because it's going to determine what this function actually does. Now, if you've ever played Minecraft Parkour, this should look very familiar to you. We're simply walking for one tick, and then we will sprint jump, which is also called a jam in the parkour community. And then we wait for 11 ticks, which is just enough to finish right before we're about to land from our sprint jump, before we use bot.clear control states, which makes it so that we are no longer holding forward, sprint, or jump keys. Now, this is also the first time that we're using control states, so I'm quickly going to go over how they work. Now, for managing your control states, we can use bot.setControl state followed by the name of of the state and then whether you want to set it to true or false and then if you ever want to set them all to false you can just use bot.clear control states and then in between managing your control states you want to wait some specific amount of time now you could do this using some sort of time.sleep function but generally this is considered bad practice because Although a Minecraft tick is supposed to be 50 milliseconds, this isn't always the case. So we instead use MindFlayer's bot.wait for ticks. And then the number you put in here is the amount of Minecraft ticks to wait, which represents intervals of 50 milliseconds. So if you put one, it'll wait exactly 50 milliseconds-ish of in-game time. And then if you put two, it'll be two ticks, which is about 100 milliseconds. Three would be about 150 milliseconds. So if you put 20 in here, wait about one in-game second, which is important to differentiate from a real world one second. Now, if there's no server lag whatsoever, then it will be exactly one second. However, if there's a lot of interference in the form of lag, then this can be much, much longer than that. And that's why we use the bot.wait for ticks, because the reason why we're waiting is we're waiting for something to happen in the game. And as time flows differently in game from how it does in the real world, we want to use the in game version of a time delay instead of the real world version of a time delay. Now, let's see how this works in practice. All right, now, as always, we're going to run the script, head into our client, wait for the bot to join. All right, now we're going to fly over to it. We're going to type look at me, which is the command for it. It'll look at us and then run and jump. We'll do that again here. We'll do it while we're in the air. You'll see it always just looks at us and then it'll jump in our direction. And the reason why we walk forward one block, or walk forward one tick, sorry, before we jump is because if we didn't, we'd get a lot more distance, or a lot less distance, and it'd be harder to visually see the jump, I guess, um, because they're not covering as much distance. We could also do a lot more impressive things if we wanted to, which I might do for a later video if you guys really want. And that would be doing like very specific parkour jumps. So if anybody here is watching this and they've done anything within the parkour community, you know, there's a lot of like, quote unquote, tasks um different momentums so all these include like backwards momentums where you jump backwards and then jump forwards and things like this and this would include like very specific momentum for like three block nears and stuff that you would normally do using a macro but you could instead do using this bot so if you for example had a minecraft parkour map and you want to do a showcase of your bot going to the parkour map you could put a list of all of the jumps and then you could have a bunch of functions for each type of jump that you might see within a parkour map and then you could use some sort of dictionary to translate those jumps into the different functions to use and then you could do the entire parkour map without having to do anything else like you just give it a list of the jumps and it could do the entire map which i think is pretty cool anyways if you want to see anything more interesting like that feel free to leave a comment down in the description uh, specifically mentioning exactly what you want to see, and then I could take a look at that, maybe translate into something a bit more general for a wider audience, uh, and then hopefully help you guys out with anything kind of parkour and movement related that you might help with. And then know that our intermediate store for this week is going to take a look at pathfinding. So if you have any ideas of something parkour or movement related that you'd like to see as a tutorial, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll take a look at it. Just know that the intermediate tutorial that we're doing for this week is pathfinding already. So if you're planning on coming down below that we should do pathfinding stuff, we're already doing that two days from when this video is coming out. So if you're watching this as it comes out, it'll be here this Thursday. 
Uh, if you're watching this in the future, it's just the next episode for you, so you can go see that right now. And that'll be it for this video. So down in the description, you'll find three sections. The first will be all the code used for this video. The second will be all my references used for making the code using this tutorial. And the third will be two different Discord links. The first being the Prismarine.js Discord, which is for more general Mind Flayer help. And the second is a link to our community Discord in case you have any questions regarding these tutorial videos in particular. And that's it. Cheers.